Hi everybody, my name is Noah and I'm here today to show you the French horn. The French horn is part of a group of instruments called brass instruments. And what that means is, for one thing, they're made out of metal, right? Another thing is how we actually make sound on these instruments. So first I'm going to let you hear a little bit of how the French horn sounds. on the bus there um, but yeah that's kind of an idea of how this instrument can sound and so in order for me to make that sound sorry it's a little tight right now there we go <laughs> a little a little stuff but anyway uh, I use this little thing called a mouthpiece you can see a little bit better how that looks and so what this is is well it's what I put my mouth on and goes into the instrument and to make sound happen. So, how does that work? Well, I'll let you know a little secret of how every brass instrument player makes sound. We do this. <laughs> it's kind of silly. Uh, and we do that into the big hole here. So it sounds more like this. Also pretty silly. But then when you put that into the instrument, it sounds kind of like this. all of a sudden it sounds really nice, right? It's weird. But let me also show you a little something special about the French horn. So this is a French horn mouthpiece, right? You can kind of see the size of it. This right here is actually a trumpet mouthpiece. And if you don't know what a trumpet looks like, this is what a trumpet looks like. Probably seen this quite a bit. But there's a little comparison of how big these are. Pretty similar size, the trumpet is a little bit bigger. And then here is actually a trombone mouthpiece, which is this thing. But I want to show you just how different the size is of these two. You can see the French horn mouthpiece is very small compared to the trombone. And I don't have a tuba, but if I did have a tuba mouthpiece, you'd see that all of these pale in comparison to just how big the tuba mouthpiece is. So for us brass players playing these kinds of mouthpieces, we're going, right? Tuba mouthpiece is so big, you actually go in order to play it. It's crazy. Um, and it's very silly, but very nice sound, right? So you probably hear the French horn a lot. If you watch movies and stuff, you'll, you'll hear it a lot in the music in movies, especially if you're a Star Wars fan by chance. Um, the French horn is used a lot in that score. For example, that's the instrument that plays that theme. Now you'll probably notice that I'm pushing these little buttons here when I'm playing the instrument. There are three here and there's a little thumb one back here as well. I'll show you the back side of the instrument. You can see that when I push the button, there's a little mechanism there that's rotating. So that's a fun part about playing brass instruments is you get to push buttons all day. I love doing that. Pushing buttons is fun. And I actually have the trumpet here because I want to show you what the inside of one of these looks like. So these buttons here are essentially doing the same thing that a French horn is doing, but I can take these out much better on a trumpet so I can actually show you what it looks like. You can see inside here, there are all these little holes, right? And so when I push down this button inside of the trumpet, those holes are moving up and down and it's like a railroad on the inside, right? So I blow into the instrument and the air goes through and it goes into the tubing and it gets to the buttons. And when I press the buttons, the holes are moving up and down and it's like redirecting railroad tracks, right? It changes where the air is actually going through the instrument before it comes out the end here. Another thing you might notice about the French horn and other brass instruments is we got these big round things on the end, right? It's the trombone again. These big round holes 
Well, those are actually called bells. And my French horn is very cool in that it has a detachable bell, meaning I can take this off. I broke it. Just kidding, I didn't break it. It's supposed to do that. It's like a little hat, right? Well, why does my belt come off? Really just for uh, convenience when I have it in its case here. It's a nice flat case. It's a little more compact, it fits on airplanes. Um, that's really all it is. But I also wanted to show you that it has a very important purpose for the instrument. So if I play the horn without the bell on it, it looks kind of silly now, right? But if I play it, it sounds completely different. Right, totally different. And when I put this back on here, you're gonna notice a lot of differences in the sound. It's gonna sound a lot more round, maybe fuller. Sorry, one sec. Right, it sounds, it sounds like a bigger, meatier sound, right? It, it's got more punch to it. And the reason for that, think about, imagine you were standing in like the middle of a nice big grass field and there's someone else maybe 200 feet away from you and you're trying to talk to them, right? First thing you're gonna do is you're probably gonna yell because you wanna be loud so that they can hear you farther away. But you might also do this, right? And you might yell, hey, hey, are you over there, right? You're gonna put your hands around your mouth and it's gonna feel like you're, you're pushing the sound farther because you are, right? When I'm talking, all the sound is going every which way. It's going forward, it's going up, down, left, right, everywhere, right? All the sound coming out of my mouth is going everywhere. But when I put my hands like this, all of a sudden I'm directing all the sound right at you guys so that you can hear me better. That's exactly what this thing is doing. It's like cupping your hands around the end of the instrument. And all of a sudden that sound goes. Right? <laughs> so now I wanted to show you maybe some different ways that I can play the instrument in order to make it have a different kind of character to it. So I'm gonna play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star here. And I'll just play it kind of casually as you probably expect me to play it, right? So just... That's Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. It sounds kind of calm, you know, nothing really crazy. What if I was really angry? I was just really mad at that star up in the sky and I went. <laughs> sounds a lot different, right? It's still Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, but it sounds brassier. It's got this edge to the sound. And that's a really cool thing about the French horn is you can go in so many different directions with how you want to say what you're saying on the instrument, right? You can be nice and big like that. You can be nice and smooth and silky. You can be a little, a little jazzy if you want. You can... Right, you can play around with that. And it just has so many different tones that the instrument can achieve. You can be like, So I think that's a really cool thing with the French horn is just kind of the range of emotions that you can play on this. But also just the range of the instrument itself in terms of how high of notes you can play versus how low of notes you can play. It's a really cool thing that's pretty unique to the French horn is I can play down as if I was a tuba player, but I can also play way up high like I was a trumpet. So I could go... this tiny little mouthpiece. But I can also go very high, like. Right, that's about as high as I can go, but 
I can go very high. It's, it's a very wide range of musicality that you have with the French horn. Now I wanted to show you guys some fun things that the, horn, that the French horn can do that uh, maybe aren't used very often as a French horn player, but we can do, right? So maybe sillier sounds that we can make, some just cooler sounds we can make that you might not expect that we can do. So first of all, um, I can use this little thing. It's called a mute, uh, although it's a particular kind of mute. I put it into the French horn right here. So it kind of plugs up the bell. See, it's kind of sticking out there. And it totally changes the sound. Very different, right? All of a sudden, I can, I can actually feel the air pushing out through this tiny little thing. Right, and it's all very condensed right here. It's a lot more brassy and just kind of. So, cool sound, right? Here's another kind of mute. It's a little bit bigger, a little more open, and it doesn't totally plug up the end of it. There are actually some holes kind of down in here that you can't quite see on camera maybe, but trust me, there are gaps in there so that air can get through. But this also changes the sound. So I'll play first with the mute in. And then I'll take it out so you can hear what it normally sounds like again. So, all this is doing really is as if I put my hand over my mouth and all of a sudden I sound kind of muffled, right? Kind of silly. Um, but that's that's essentially the same thing that it's doing. I'm just kind of putting something over the end of this and it changes the sound into something different. Another fun technique is called flutter tongue. And what that is, is uh, I roll my tongue like this. Right? And I play the instrument at the same time. So it kind of, first I'll play normally again. So I'll just. Versus. Right, so it's got a, this rattliness to it. Cause I'm just, I'm just rolling my tongue as I play. Take the mouthpiece off and you can hear him. Have been a little spit coming out there that's gross huh uh good times <laughs> but yeah flutter tongue it's a really cool technique and i love when i get to do that because it just sounds so cool okay. another thing about most um brass instruments wind instruments in general where you're blowing air through it is we don't get to play more than one note at a time Actually, I have a piano back there, and you know, if, you, if you've seen a piano, you know it's all these keys laid out, and you can press the keys, and they make sounds, but you can play multiple of those keys at the same time, and all of those different notes sound, you know, whatever ones you press down. Whereas with this, I can't do that. Kinda. There's a little way around it. Uh, we can only really play two notes at a time, kind of, uh, by actually singing in the back of our throat while we're going <laughs> into the instrument. So, for example, I'll play the first note, and then you'll hear a second one come in a little bit above it, so. I'm not very good at that one, <laughs> but it's fun to do, um, and every now and then you'll see somebody asking to do it, uh, like, in, in terms of when you are, you know, reading a piece of music, and they'll say, hey, can you do multiphonics? And, which is just playing two notes at the same time. <laughs> it's, it's really hard, but it's, it's a pretty cool sound, right? I'll play Old MacDonald Had a Farm for you. and I'll do a couple of those little techniques here and there, maybe a little flutter tongue. Uh, I'll change up kind of the style that I'm playing in, maybe some uh, different volume changes, just so you can kind of hear the instrument.
popular tune. Uh, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. So why do I enjoy playing the French horn? Well, for one thing, I really like the way that it sounds. I think it has really pretty sounds that it can make, and I love the role that it tends to serve in an orchestra or in a band, right? Um, I, I love playing with other people, and this is an instrument that's very commonly um, not alone, right? Usually you play this alongside other people who are playing other instruments in a much bigger group, right? Very rarely do you see this just on its own. Um, and I like that. I like playing with other people and making music together because I think that some of the best music comes from working together as a collective to create something bigger than you could do just on your own. Another thing is a lot of people say that this instrument is very hard to play. And it kind of is, right? When, especially when you first get going, I think, <laughs> sorry trumpet players, but this might be a little bit easier to at least get started with, right? And I know because this is one of the first instruments I ever played was a trumpet. And it was pretty easy for me to kind of get the hang of it and get going. Of course, getting really good at this is very hard, but just starting out on the trumpet versus just starting out on the French horn, it's very different, right? This is a much more complicated and difficult instrument to play, uh, especially because like we were saying, remember, this is a lot smaller uh, of a size of mouthpiece, right, for your, for your lips. And that actually is a big factor in why it can be so difficult to play. Um, but I think it's totally worth it to spend the time to get better at this instrument. It's very rewarding. It's, it's a lot of fun. And you get to play some really cool parts uh, when you're in a band or when in an orchestra playing this instrument. Somebody heard me playing French horn and had to come down and say hello because somebody likes French horn. This is my dog, his name's Rolo. He's a good boy. He plays French horn too. Just kidding, apparently he doesn't. <laughs> but I hope you all enjoyed learning a little bit more about this really cool instrument. Bye Rolo. Um, <laughs> thank you all for watching and have a good day.